Welcome back to Vampire. We just left the Ascalon Club estate, I guess. We're now an official member and our current quest, main quest anyway, is to speak with the locals around this area and see if we can find the source of the infection in the West End. And I want to talk with people anyway because there's a bunch of people I've never talked with. Let's, let's start with you. Good evening, miss. Oh my god, no. Please, Mr. Vampire, don't kill me. Please, no. I'm too young to die. I still have so much to offer this world. Wait, no. Why do you think I would... What? Don't worry, Dr. Reed. I know you wouldn't harm me. Mother told me you were in this part of town and might drop by. Your mother? My name is Charlotte, sir. Charlotte Ashbury. My mother taught me long ago how to recognize the signs that betray a vampire. I understand she also taught you how to tease and gently mock innocent young Ekons. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Charlotte. It is truly a very particular skill passed down only amongst certain people to recognize a vampire. It's very hard to tell. Anyway, interesting that there's another Ashbury. I don't think Lady Ashbury ever mentioned that they had a daughter. Healthy, level five. Tell me about your adoption. What do you want to know? How did you meet Lady Ashbury? First, I was an orphan in the institution for girls she manages in the West End. When I was ten, she adopted me and I have lived with her ever since. Did you know she was a vampire when she picked you? The correct word is Ekon, Doctor. And no, I had no idea why my mother only showed up at night. She told me everything when I turned 16, though I suspected the truth for a long time before that. Who are your real parents? Elizabeth Ashbury is my real mother. She raised me and has taken care of me all my life. I have no idea who my progenitors are or were. Do you live with her? I still spend a lot of time in my mother's mansion, but I have my own house now. I have a life to live, you see. And one day, I'll have my death to face. It's gotta be a very strong pull to become an immortal when your own mother is an immortal. I imagine if you ask them, I, I'm sure they would do it. I mean, I imagine Lady Ashbury wants to do it, right? You'd want your children to live forever if you could. Also, that question's always annoyed me. Who are your real parents? It, it really should be... Like, when you ask that sort of a question, it should be, who are your biological parents, not real parents? Because biological and real are not necessarily the same. Like in this case, the people that abandoned her or whatever in the orphanage, or maybe they just died and couldn't take care of them anymore. They're, in no way are they this person's real parents. Her real parent is the person who actually took care of her for the majority of her life. Like, being a parent isn't just about biology. It's, it's about caring for someone, raising them. What exactly has your mother told you about me? Your name and profession, obviously and the mystery about your maker. I'm sorry to hear about what happened to your sister, sir. Mother says it was not your fault. Does it not scare you to know what I am? What your mother is? Why should it? My mother is the most compassionate woman. Must I be wary of her, Dr. Reed? Or you? Of course not. You have nothing to fear from me. Or your mother. Good to know. And don't worry, my mother told me everything I need to know about vampire tricks, their nature as well as features. Your mother is not like any other vampire I've met. I believe she thinks the same about you, Dr. Reed. So you support our impending marriage, then? What are you doing out here? You mean, what do I do outside at night since I am a woman? Let me ask you a question, sir. Would you ask the same question of a man? Actually, yes. I ask the same question to everyone who dares to go outside at night, 
considering the risks. Well, if you must know, I campaign for the right to vote for all women. Why should I wait to the age of 30 years when men can vote at 21? Right now they have to wait till they're 30 years old? Wow, that's bullshit. How are the locals reacting to your claims? People here can't wait for a wall to be built to isolate the West End from the rest of town. That's how progressive they are. If this happens, Emily and I will blow it up. Explosives are very dangerous, young lady. <laughs> and who is this Emily? She is my best friend, and a suffragette too. She was supposed to campaign with me tonight, but hasn't turned up. Have you any reason to be worried about her? Recently, Emily started to believe in... Well, she got interested in vampires. I'm afraid she might be in trouble. Let me guess. You spoke to her about us, didn't you? Despite your mother's warning, I think I should try to find your friend. Oh, that would be top-notch. I can tell you where she might have gone. You have my thanks, Dr. Reed. And please, don't tell my mother. Jonathan is so patronizing. <laughs> Just the way the way they said that, I thought they were going to say that as a joke, and then, you know, they kind of joke about how ridiculous Jonathan's being, but no, he said it with a complete straight face. S said, explosives are dangerous. Explosives are dangerous, young lady. God, Jonathan. What do you think about this part of town? I was raised here, and I suppose it feels like home. You grew up in this part of town too, did you not? Yes, I was born a few streets away. A small world, is it not? Did you ever imagine that my mother was your neighbor all that time? That you could have met her in a dark alley at night? You won't trick me twice, young lady. We both know Lady Ashbury never hunts or attacks prey at random. Come on, Doctor. Don't tell me you never thought about that possibility. Her fangs on your neck. Oh, are you blushing, Dr. Reed? Are you? No, I'm pretty pale. You know, it's a strange thought. I, I don't know exactly how old Lady Ashbury is, but I'm pretty sure she's been a vampire for a very, very long time. Which means, probably, when young Jonathan Reed was just a little kid growing up here in the West End. Lady Ashbury looked exactly the same as she does now. At one point, Jonathan was a tiny little kid and she just looks like she does now. That's a weird thought. Is there something that's bothering you? Too much selfishness and individualism for my taste, even when there was no epidemic. Even if that's partly true, May I remind you that many charitable institutions are financed by the selfish and filthy rich. I suppose you're right. But society <laughs> must reform and renew itself or we are all done for. Jonathan. Jonathan, you're just such a... You're just such a shit. You're just such a shit, Jonathan. Johnny boy. At least the rich people. <laughs> Lots of charitable organizations are funded by the rich. That's true. Guess what? Despite that, the rich are still rich. Meaning, if rich people just didn't exist, like if money was much better spread out amongst people and not so concentrated in the extremely wealthy, you wouldn't have to rely on their good graces and trying to court them, relying on, oh, please, please help me, rich person. You wouldn't have to do that because money would just be all over the damn place. They would have more of it, and you wouldn't have to waste your time dealing with some rich asshole. In other words, don't worship the rich just because they give a lot of money. Bill Gates? Bill Gates gives a shit ton of money to charity. Doesn't make him a good person. It's better than not giving the money, but he's still rich as hell. Why Lady Asprey chose you to become her daughter? No, I don't. Each time I ask her that question, she smiles and says it's precisely because I dare to ask such questions. Do you ever regret that she chose you? Of course not. Though I often wonder if she adopted others before me. If so, where are they buried? 
How was it for them to pass through life with a never aging mother? I'm sorry, I, was, I totally didn't pay any attention to what they were saying. Because I'm still thinking about that rich person money thing. Did you know Jeff Bezos, or however you pronounce his name, the Amazon owner asshole? Did you know that he could single-handedly, right now, just like cancel all student debt in the entirety of the US? And make all university and college completely free to attend, and it would cost just like a relatively tiny portion of his total net worth? You could just do that. You could just end student debt right now. So, no, when a rich person gives someone scraps, I'm not going to say thank you. Okay. Clear my mind of all that. What are we doing? We're asking you questions. Right. Local source of infection. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? A few days ago, I spotted a strange house while campaigning for women's suffrage. Awful smell. No answer when I knocked. Where is it? It's the Mullaney's. A nice family who live in a big house near the park in the eastern part of this neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me. I'm curious what the source of the infection is going to look like. I'm imagining some sort of horrendous, like, flesh nest or something, you know? Alright, we got a couple more people to talk with over here. You are very dressed up. Calhoun Shop. It's locked, all right. Is this your place? Of all countries, you Good evening, die. sir. Please forgive me for disturbing you. I'm a doctor. I never judge a man by his title, but by his attitude. And you are not disturbing me at all. I am Calhoun Russell, and I welcome you. Well, I must admit, it's good to receive a warm welcome for once. I'm Doctor. I'm Jonathan Reed. Welcome, Doctor Reed. Welcome to my humble shop. Quite a character. Oh, yeah, fatigue. I can help you with that. Do you need medical? You don't. Wa I uh, first, let's see what they sell. I may have a look at your goods, Mister. Oh, right. I keep expecting people to have something special, but it's always just the same stuff. Ah, uh, well, I don't have much money. I'll just probably not buy anything unless they have that potass, not potassium. Um. Whatever the thing is I need for that, like, fire upgrade for the weapon. Forgot what it was called. Good eat. White phosphorus, that's what it was. Is it not a little too late to be trading? On the contrary, it is the perfect hour. Believe me, my friend, it is always at night that you meet the most fascinating characters. So you prefer to work at night? Oh, I also enjoy a sunny day like everybody else. But the night always has a certain je ne sais quoi of its own. But what about the epidemic? The bombs and raids? And all the random violence? Please, sir, this is London, England. We will prevail. And if a bomb must fall on my shop, then I'll be there to hear it falling. So your shop is your ship. Go down with it. Okay. What can you tell me about this place? I recently found the best steak and kidney pie in the city. I'd be glad to share the address if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I must confess, I have quite specific tastes when it comes to nutrition. Really? Well, I'm always happy to try new exotic meals. If you ever find an intriguing table, please share the address. Finding a good restaurant. Oh, that's a quest? Is that really all that interests you? Oh, I have many passions, but nothing brings me ecstasy like subtle and exquisite flavors from my teeth to my belly. The Lone Gourmet Quest. 
I wonder if I need to give them the address of that, um, the place in that mall. Remember that weird mall that only has stairs inside of shops that go up to the second floor? And there was that menu for the, it was like a blind tasting restaurant where you can't see what you eat? It's probably that. How is the situation in this part of town? Life is good and peaceful. We're lucky to live in such an era of progress and wonders. Are you not concerned about the epidemic? Oh, I'm sure the authorities would take the appropriate measure if the danger were that high. You cannot expect the newspapers to expose the truth while the war is still raging. I can assure you that the situation here is desperate. Well, that's news then. But I can't believe that things are that bad. Are you sure you're not exaggerating a bit? For the thrill of it? Surely you've had screeching skulls coming through here at some point. Or Volkods? Do you have any family nearby? Not since my parents died. I'm London's Lone Gourmet. London's Lone Gourmet? What a strange title. I used that name in my early years when I was a food critic, and I kept it. Really? But you seem to be such a pleasant and sociable fellow. I'm afraid the real hedonist has to be sometimes. I discovered ecstasy as a solitary pleasure, but it does not mean it can't ever be shared. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual? Not really. Wait, now that you mention it, I don't see the McPhersons in my favorite restaurants. They love delicate meals too, you understand. Thank you. It may be nothing, but I'll investigate anyway. Where do they live? They have a house in the southern part of the district, somewhere north of the railway bridge. There is a courtyard, if I remember rightly. Goodbye, Mr. Russell. I'm sure you'll take care of yourself. There's one more person that I saw. Where are you? Yes, I haven't been around here either. I wonder if they went back here, the person I'm trying to find. Where exactly am I? That goes to the park. Which is the second source of infection, the first source. Oh, so there's multiple sources. I guess each one of the each one of the conversations that I've had with people is like giving me one more source. Yeah, let's see what's this way. Found another unknown person, not the one I was searching for, around the back of the Ascalon Club. Who are you? Good evening, miss. Can I help you? I'm a doctor. Dr. Jonathan Reed. I am... I am... Karina Billow. I don't need any doctor. The rats. Where are the rats? Oh, something's up with them. Anyway, uh, I went to this camera just to check out something. So, previously we've seen that weird bug where a character's face will look high quality, but their clothes will look super low quality. And then if you like get out of the dialogue and I guess wait a bit, everything can load in. We had that happen at least once that I showed on camera and I think a bunch of other times before that. And this is the inverse it looks like. So the face is obviously like, oh look at their eye. Uh, the face is obviously, the texture for it is super low res, it's just like a, a big mushy blur. But the clothes are super high quality. Very strange. Miss, you don't seem well at all. Are you afraid of rats? Has one bitten you? No, it's me who bites them. Tasty, juicy, disgusting rats. I can't stop eating them. Help me, please. Help me to disobey the voice. They're a vampire. They're healthy? Level two? What happened to you? The rats. The answer hides in their little crunchy bones. Their juicy, tiny brains. Miss Billow, please, try to concentrate. 
Why do you worry about rats so much? The voice in my head. He forces me to do so. Drink their blood, he said. Eat their flesh. Tell me about the voice in your head. Who is it? Can you describe it? Is it someone you know? Someone you met? Keep your mouth shut, he said. Don't ever speak about me or I'll abandon you. Help me, please, Doctor. Do you feel compelled to obey that voice, Miss Billow? Even if you're loath to submit to it? Yes. Please. Help. This poor person. I really want to help him. Tell me about yourself, Miss Billow. What do you do for a living? Oh, I'm hungry. Need to eat. Have you got something for me? Blood, perhaps? Can you give me blood, Dr. Reed? Don't you remember who you are, miss? What you did for work? I was... strong. Proud. I campaigned for good causes. But that was before... before... It does not matter anymore. I'm so hungry. What is the local news here about, Miss Billow? Shadows. Such an awkward switch of topic. Shadows hunting shadows. Whispers in the dark. Pestilence. Suffering. Death. Oh, can't do anything more yet? Okay. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? Infection. Infection. The rats carry it, I heard. Rats. Rats, rats. Many rats around that big house. Funny smell, too. Dead flesh. And where is this house? West of the park. Not very far. A, a big house with no sound, no light, no life left. I must go now. Goodbye, Miss Billow. I hope I can help them in the future. So is that a third source of infection? Hmm. No? Maybe there's multiple sources for the same house that you can get? So maybe it's just one of the houses that's already been marked? Hey, here we go. Outside the front of the Ascalon Club is where this person is. It's the original person I was searching for. Good evening, sir. May I have your attention, please? Come on, Johnny. Don't you recognize your oldest friend? Clarence. Clarence Crossley. How are you? My God. So you survived the war too. So sorry I didn't recognize you at first. Well, I almost didn't recognize you either. War does that to men, I heard. In my case, it was true, for I witnessed the horror that lies underneath. How is your wife, Venus? We've spent so much time away from each other, and so many things have happened. Is everything all right at home? Surely Venus was relieved to see you return from France in one piece. Have you forgot what people are like in this part of town, Johnny? Venus fears for our family reputation. Now her husband has become the village idiot. Village idiot? When did you escape the war and return to London? You know what's funny? I almost never think about the war. Not anymore. I'm involved in another kind of battle now. What is this new battle? Well, I saw terrible things during the war. Horrors I thought I'd forget. They're here too. They're everywhere. Vampires. Wait, so do they have PTSD, or... I... At first I was thinking PTSD, but if it's just vampires, then... I mean, those are actually real. So... <laughs> maybe... Maybe they both know vampires are real and they have PTSD, I don't know. I know what you mean. I haven't had much time to think about the war either since my return. Of course. With the epidemic, I bet you've been busy as well. Forgive me, Johnny. I, I didn't want to sound selfish. 
So I guess I've been talking about the vampires that they've seen and everybody just thinks they're ridiculous. Uh, I guess I'll finish this. How is it? Just in case a new hint comes from it. But you're alive. You returned in one piece and you have a family. How many soldiers can say the same? Believe me, it's not quite that simple. Unlike you, I'm not the man I used to be. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Can you help me? Infection is everywhere these days. But if you ever go to the park near that swanky house belonging to the, the Malanies... Yes? What about the Malanies? What about their house? Not enough noise for a big family with children. Not enough movement. Closed doors. What is going on in there? I wonder. You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. So that's also one of the locations we already had marked. Yeah, okay. Let's go speak with Venus, their wife. I actually saw them back here. So just behind the uh, Ascalon Club, there's this like little section here where there's a fountain and it goes over to the North Docks. It's a little connecting thing. And I just briefly poked my head into there. And I don't think I've ever been there and I saw uh, Venus. There they are. You know, just to make sure, let me... Oh, they have a migraine. I forgot to check. Let me help you. You need some rest. Yeah, there's this gate here between the North Docks and the West End. I'm guessing this is... Yeah. Wanted to make sure I unlocked this. Okay. Venus. Hello? Is anyone there? Jonathan, is that you? I did not know you were back in London. Oh, my dear Johnny, I'm so sorry for your loss. Mary was such a sweetheart. Thank you, Venus. May I come in? I was going to bed, actually. I guess I'll just use my vampire powers then. I'm sure you can spare me a few minutes. For old time's sake. Of course you may enter, Jonathan. At least you survived the Great War. I feared the worst. God, they're so rich. Look at what they're wearing. Look at that dress and those beads and everything. It is seriously fancy person clothing. I remember when Mary came here with her husband and her son. They were such a beautiful family. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep going. so much loot. So this is the upstairs. And there's two things to read from up here. We got a piece of lore. I think it was this. Under the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole, the Lost Library. Do vampires have allies among the living? Yes, they do. They call themselves the Brotherhood, and they serve their immortal masters in many ways, probably in exchange for privileges and knowledge. Somewhere in London is the seat of their power, where the secret council conspire against us. I call it the Lost Library. It is a place where these traitors gather many occult and lost books. I personally offer a thousand pounds to the first who can give me proof of the existence of this library and its exact location. Clarence Crossley. Oh, Cla Clarence Crossley. My friend from the war. And here's another one. Venus's Journal. 9th of July, 1918. I spent the last day and night crying. Crying tears of joy. I did not know bliss could be so painful. My Clarence just wrote me. He's back from the war alive and unharmed. He'll be at home in two weeks. Thank you, God. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see my beloved husband again. 
14th of August, 1918. Clarence's attitude still worries me. He's not the same since he came back. The first few weeks, I thought it was just the necessary adjustment period, but his behavior seems to be more and more erratic. Nowadays, he spends all his time outside, day and night, searching for evidence. He does not care about the flu. He does not care about me. He's starting to frighten me. 21st of September. I can't believe this. Clarence has spent half of his pension to print some stupid leaflets he now wants to freely give away in the neighborhood. People are starting to laugh at me. Now he wants to organize some public lecture in a recently closed theater to warn people about the presence of evil creatures in London. Free entry, of course. My husband may have come back unharmed from the war, but I'm afraid he lost his mind over there. 24th of September. Clarence just confessed he has not spent half of his pension, but all of it, plus some of our savings. Paper and ink cost so much because of the war, he said, but it is a cost we must pay. People openly mock us now. I don't know what to do. 5th of October. Today the butcher, Mr. Galloway, Mr. Galway, sent me the monthly fee and requested payment in full. He also told me he now demands to be paid each time we buy some meat from his shop. No more credit. The baker asked the same thing two days ago. First, I thought it was a new policy because of the restrictions in the epidemic, but it seems my friends still have financial arrangements from the sh same shop. I was so ashamed I could not speak. 8th of October. We can't keep on like this. Clarence is completely mad. He's spending all the money we have, and I don't see how to stop him. Sometimes I wish... I wish he did not come back from the war. Alright, let's see if we can fix this situation, because this is bad. It's a pleasure to see you again, Venus. So you return from the war in one piece, too. Thank God. My Clarence is back home, too. How is the old rascal? Probably outside. Chasing ghosts and chimeras. Clarence has changed a lot since he returned from the war, you know. How have you been since the last time we met? How long has it been? Three years now? I've done my duty. Like all British women. You have no idea what it was like to wait for months without knowing if I'd still be a wife or a widow. I understand. Luckily, this part of town has been saved from the worst of the bombings, from what I've seen. Yes, and it's also true about the epidemic. The flu has killed here too, of course, but not on such a large scale as in other parts of town. Have you noticed anything peculiar about the neighborhood recently? You mean except for your return to town? No. Oh, and again, Jonathan. Please accept my condolences for your mother and your sister. Such a tragedy. Thank you, Venus. It was so sudden, and I've been so busy, I haven't spoken to anyone about it. I wish I could have assisted at the funeral, but you know, it's been so quick. And what with the epidemic in the streets? There's no need to apologize, my dear. It's normal considering the circumstances. No, it's not. I am sure that Clarence has not even thought to present you his condolences. He is too busy with his penny dreadful stories. Why is my return so surprising? It's more an unexpected happy end than a surprise. You and Clarence, back from the war. You have no idea how hard it's been for me. Venus, why do you worry so much about your family's reputation? Everyone laughs at Clarence now. And they avoid me because they believe I share his insane opinions. I'm a leper in my own community. Wow, so many hints that I still can't do. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual? The McPhersons. I heard they locked themselves in their own house. They could just be afraid of getting sick. Perhaps you're right. But if I were you, I'd pay them a visit. A big house reachable through a courtyard to the north of the railway bridge. Goodbye for now. 
Really? And from all that, nothing new to talk with, with Clarence? So many hints. What do I have to do to unlock them, I wonder? You need... I guess that's all I can do with that for now. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I am going to head to these two sources of the infection. <laughs>